Perfect. So firstly, just how are you? How's recovery going and, and how is everything? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, thank you. And recovery's going really well. I'm enjoying it. Um, someone asked me this like the other day and was, um, he was like, it can be such a tough injury. And I was like, yeah, it was tough at first, but at the same time, it's quite humbling as well. And it just, um, it brings you down to earth and lets you know that you're still a human being. And, and like I said, I tried to look after myself first before anything else, before Danny Do the footballer and Danny Do the human being. So apart from that, everything's really good. And what kind of stage are you at in your recovery? Um, I'm at the stage where it feels like pre-season now. Um, I done, I done a run the other day, and it was like a six k run of loads of different things of passing, of dribbling, and and like weaving in and out of cones, and like. <laughs> Two minutes in, my legs started feeling heavy from the day before, and I was like, "Yeah, it's back now. It's time to get serious. It's getting serious now." Yeah, what's what's been the kind of hardest bit about recovery so far? I'd say the first few months of being in and seeing the boys training, and that's normally a routine. That was quite hard, and and but then obviously nursey when nursey had these up, and then I was a few months ahead, like a few weeks ahead, and. I had someone in there with me, so it was quite lonely in the gym by itself. Yeah, let's go back to, to the day it happened. What what was kind of the initial, just when it happened, what was that like? Um, when it happened, it was like, I just thought to myself, oh, I've never felt this feeling before. Felt the side of my calf or the top bone of my calf, just felt something hard. And I was like, I've never had this before. I was just coming back from an ankle injury so I didn't want to risk anything, tried to jog on again, couldn't jog on. And funny enough, the manager was the first person that was like, what was that? And I explained it to him and he said, that sounds like your ACL. Obviously him doing it quite a few times. But yeah, I couldn't believe it. And I said, I batted that off. I was like, nah, no chance, not my ACL. Because normally they say it happens to people with weaker legs and blah, blah, blah. But this time it picked me. Yeah, we, we spoke to George Ness and he said it was, it sounds like different because when we spoke to the manager after it was George, he said he knew something was kind of wrong mm -hmm. straight away. Was it the same with you instantly? He thought this this isn't right. Yeah, so he, the manager basically said he thinks it, it was that straight away. But then like the symptoms that I showed didn't show it was an ACL because I didn't have any swelling, I didn't have any pain. But then by the time you get the scan back, and then you don't get a message from Dan Green, the physio, that um, you've done this on the day. It was a call, ah, can you come in? Then you sort of know it's something serious. Yeah, and it's, it's one of the worst injuries you can have as a, a footballer as well with the, just the time scale. Yeah, just, I think um, it's the time scale that's more challenging. Obviously, not playing football for this long already. And what, well, I'm six months in, and I know I'm in a happier place now, but when you first hear it, it you just think, how am I going to not play football for nine months? I remember like the weekend after going to watch Aston Villa and I was watching them play and I was thinking, I'm not going to play football for ages. And that feels like ages ago. So, yeah. Yeah. What was that conversation like when you came in and, and spoke to the manager and he said what had happened? Just how, how was that and just how were you feeling when you left? Um, Obviously, when I spoke to the manager and Dan and they told me what it was, I couldn't believe it because to me, all I wanted to do is get back, play football and I build on the season that I've already I had last year and like almost forgetting about that season and building on this season to go again because that's what it is. Every time we play, every year we start, you're getting questioned, you're getting examined again and I was ready to go. But then that happened and they told me that brought me straight to tears, I'm not going to lie, and um, the gaffer just gave me a moment. I went outside and, funny enough, my mum called me and she's the person I normally speak to about everything and she called me and just said, like, there's people with worse <laughs> and that sort of, the tears just went straight away and it was funny when she said that, I sort of was like, all right, it's a challenge now and it's um, part of, I've had loads of obstacles and things that I've had to overcome in life, so it's nothing new.
you spoke about your mum is is your family just being really important in all of this? Yeah, so like I said, I've got a little boy and luckily having him where he's a bit older and he can do more things and play around with, it's just made it so much easier because then I forgot about, obviously he's still a father, but like I, I got to focus more on seeing him grow up, being with my partner, um, my mum and dad, my brothers, who've all been there really, just to help you through everything and whatever, like whenever you felt down, which was really rare for me because like my mum said from early, it could be worse and I've always had that mentality, it could be worse. So yeah, they've been really helpful. And just go to the surgery, just how was that and kind of the, the processes you went through and, and what was that, you said you were nervous about it, what was that like? Yeah, um, it was quite nerve wracking because before it you don't really think and then um, you don't really think, you just think oh, it's getting an ACL operation, um, I've had one operation in the past on my wrist but that was nothing because I was awake and then I started searching up on Google but Google's the worst thing to do because it tells you you're going to die <laughs> um, and then um, I searched up on it, watched an operation and I was like oh, it's not too bad and I remember on the day of the op just walking around London, got, um, got my old man to drop me, no actually Elliot Bennett had an op had the um, appointment, so I went with him, and obviously he done his as well. And it was like my little prep talk journey on the way there. And then he left me in London while I waited, walked around, and that's when I started thinking oh, maybe <laughs> maybe I'll go in and open me up and see nothing's actually wrong, and the scan might be wrong. But yeah, it happened. It was good. I had the chicken burger when I come come back around, <laughs> and. That's all I remember, and then going back home and recovering well, yeah. And you say we spoke to, to George, you know, so obviously that was you know only a month after you've ha like it happened to you. Yeah. You, you don't normally get a one a season at a club, and then to get two, two within a month is... Yeah, it was crazy. I remember the day, like, clearly, because I was still... You get two weeks off when after the op, and I was still in my two-week period, and still at home, and the manager calls me and was like, you wouldn't guess what, and I was like, what and he said yeah George has done exactly the same thing blah 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 and I was just like I couldn't I couldn't believe it but every time I was watching a game any time anyone went down I was just praying they got back up and nothing happened but George's one I didn't see and then like I heard uh, George's injured so I thought it'd be just a routine injury but yeah <laughs> ACL picked him as well did you did you give him a ring have a chat with him kind yeah of? It's just normal too because, and like obviously he would have seen me go through it for a few weeks and then seen me have my op and then um, I just thought let me just call him to give him a bit of comfort and to let him know that it'll be alright and I've gone through it and if I can go through it he definitely can. Yeah, you must know exactly how he felt. You know the day when he he found out to yeah. to go through that. It's just it's just it, for him it would have been like for me it would have been terrifying because you. You want to play football, and if you can't do what you love, then you start thinking of other things, and and you start thinking like, what am I going to do with myself? And we almost um, put our identity in football sometimes, and which shouldn't be, but because that's our nature, and that's the nature of the job. You're solely focused on football, 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 but then it gives you an opportunity to be yourself and live a normal life. Is it brought the two of you closer together because you, you spend a lot of time together? A lot of time together, we have a lot of jokes, we have a lot of, we send each other all the memes and all the funny videos on Instagram and there's one that we both love, I, wouldn't, I can't say it because it's a swear, you guys are always swearing on there, but um, yeah, we've, we're really close now. It's just coming in as well. <laughs> Bro, I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, okay. I I watch, I was thinking, where's my watch? I and now, now he's got a, a mullet as well, so. Completely lost my train of thought now. <laughs> I suppose, like you say, you're spending a lot of time together in the gym, but things like, you know, it's going really well on the pitch for mm -hmm. the club. Mm -hmm. as, as good as that is, is it kind of. You want to you want to be out there. Of course, like we're human beings, so if I don't know what George said, but if he said if he said um, 
no, it's fine, the boy's doing well. Of course, you want them to do well, but you want to be involved. Everyone wants to be involved with good things. It's like the fans. When you're a fan and you watch matches, like myself being a fan of football, if I knew that my local team, Telford, was around the corner for me and winning every game, I'm going to want to go and watch every game. But if they're losing every game, you don't want to go. So if your teammates are winning most games, you want to play and you want to be there to score. And half of it, it's like, oh, how come you boys weren't doing this last year when I was scoring, but now you're doing it and I'm not here to score the goals. But um, like I said, I'm delighted for the boys and I've, I don't know how many games there's left. Nine. Nine games left. I just hope they can see the nine games out and do the best they can do to finish as high up as they can. Does it add to it as well that you can't back up what you did last season, you know, top goal scorer? You, yeah. could, you haven't been able to do that? Yeah, that's for me, that would be probably the most frustrating bit to, you like, once you've done it once, you need to do it again to prove that, yeah, you can do it and it's not the fluke, but I've got all next year to do that. If you spoke about teammates, have they just been supportive and, and there for you? Every single one of them, from the oldest player, Benno, to the youngest one in Charlie Caton or Cade or Blocker, and like, whenever, whether it's been in the gym, whether it's been off, outside, off the pitch, whether it's been, whether it's gone going in to watch them on the Saturday, and they're still treating you like you're part of the squad on the Saturday. I know they're my teammates, but like, before the game, still talking to you like normal and acting like everything's fine, and just they've just been there, really supportive. So I couldn't. Like this from the bottom of my heart, I think every one of them. Um, where are you then in in kind of time scale? What are you looking at? Have you got goals? What you're aiming for? Um, I'm not a goal setter in general. I always say this all the time: never set goals. But um, the plan is now for me to just up it now. And I've seen the surgeon for my six month, um, six month checkup, check up, and. Um, you've given me like the all clear to test the knee now and see where we're at and it's just now to the physios and Dan Green and Greg for them to push me through the paces before I get pushed to Chris Worley and Ben and then hopefully back into training fingers crossed before the end of the season. Do you have kind of any worries about anything happening again just in the back of your mind? Yeah, so I spoke to Benno about this, funny enough, and I just said, like, do you, do you get a bit worried about doing it again? And he said, yeah, you do, but by the time you fly into your first tackle or you get tackled and you fall down and you bend your knee and you get back up, as soon as that happens, it goes out of your mind. So that would be one of the first things I'm <laughs> looking forward to, getting into 50-50 with Shay Dunkley and him smashing me and dropping on the floor and then getting back up and being fine. How how good's that first game back gonna feel? It'll be unreal, but like like anything, I tried to keep my emotions out of it and just remember to be present as much as I can, knowing that I've come that far, but just want to enjoy it, enjoy being out there. Hopefully, if I can get a goal on that day, it'll be even better. But yeah, just just can't wait, can't wait.